Welcome back everyone to a brand new How to video. So as I played more and more of the harder difficulties such as difficulty 7, 8, and 9, I've come to find more solo tips that I think would really benefit everyone in the community. Also, these tips will benefit you guys regardless of if you're playing solo or with a group, so you can really take the info throughout this video and really apply it to whatever content you guys are going to be running to really increase your efficiency when completing missions. Alright, with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about here is stealth. Now, not really too many people know that there's actually a stealth mechanic in this game. What I mean by that is, is if you have patrols passing you, you can simply just chill behind like a rock and just let them pass. Or if you have like light armor and stuff like that that reduces your detection range, you can pretty much just sit really close to them as long as you're prone to not moving. And 90% of the time, they won't actually detect where you are and they'll just pass you by. You can also really apply this when you're doing the Atomaton missions. Specifically, if there's like a small or medium outpost, you can pretty much just go prone and crawl up to the enemy outpost and kill the enemies there. Now you can also melee the littler guys, so like two tap the littler enemies. This won't notify enemies that are close by. Or if you have enough space, you can also shoot them and kill them. But be advised that that does make a sound cue. So if there's enemies near, they will be alerted. Like I said, this is really useful on the Atanaha missions because you're able to go really close up to those outposts. Bullet Charger is how you want to do it if you want to take out their spawn point quickly. Throw a few nades in through the top vents, destroy those spawn points, kill the remaining enemies, and move on. Like I said, you can also do this with patrols, letting them pass by, calling up near to Agnes or, you know, spawn points, clearing them out with a few nades or stratagems before you actually engage the enemy. Now, I'm pretty sure there's more mechanics with stealth that the community has yet to find out, myself included, so I'll be testing that further to really see exactly what all stealth entails, but I really wanted to share this for you guys because playing solo, and even when you're in group play, using stealth can really benefit you guys to really sneak up on those outposts to clear them out if you're solo away from your group if you're trying to spread the objectives and clear the mission quickly or like i said in stealth it really does help to get in those faces get the spawn points clear them out before you actually start engaging so this way you can reduce the amount of enemies on your screen now speaking of stealth that brings us to our next tip which is how to actually detect really easily where stalkerness are located so the main thing that I use and a tip that I would advise everyone to use is look in the general direction of where stalkers are coming from. 90% of the time, they will actually be coming from the way that their nest spawns. So if they're coming straight from, you know, like a forest or so on straight to you, just kind of run in that general direction that they're coming at. And you should find majority of the time is their actual nest. Now, their AI isn't that good, so they don't really generally run, you know, in a circle or kind of confuse the way. Um, where their spawn is at and take their time to get to you. They kind of just straight line uh, and be line straight to you. So you can really use this to figure out where they're at and spawn, you know, and where their nest to go ahead and go and take it out more easily. Also, stalker nests give more XP. So I advise go ahead and taking that out and trying to prioritize that over other nests just because of that factor. But leaving stalkers on the field can really impact the way you're playing. Now, they're pretty easy to detect. Their stealth isn't 100% invisible, but at the same time, if they get close to you or one of them gets behind you, they can do massive damage, knock you back, really disrupt your playstyle, throw you into other enemies and bugs, and really hurt the way you're actually going to be taking on these missions, especially in solo play. So go ahead and prioritize those stalker nests. Also, if you guys are enjoying this video or you're finding any of the information useful, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. That is the best way you can support me. It really lets me know you guys are enjoying these videos. It lets YouTube know as well, which really helps with the YouTube algorithm and in which in turn, helping with the algorithm helps me again. So like I said, liking and subscribing is the best way you guys can support me if you guys wish to do so. We also have a Discord where we help each other out. If you guys have questions, we give tips and tricks. We also have an LFG channel. You can look for players if you need any help on a certain mission type or certain difficulties. So if any of that interests you, the link for that will also be in the description as well as the comment section of this video. All right, let's get back to the video. Now for our next step, I want to talk about a really powerful weapon that I think everybody should be running, and those are the impact grenades. These things are an absolute powerhouse of a grenade. They're able to go ahead and kill the walkers pretty easily. If you throw one beneath the legs of the automaton walkers, they pretty much will blow the automaton behind that's controlling it, making it a one shot kill. Also, um, tanks, you can throw them on the top of their turret uh, where they rotate back and forth. And if you place it well enough where it kind of lands behind, you can hit their weak point and a few of those impact grenades will actually blow them up. Now, on top of that, they're useful for chargers because if you throw one in the front of the charger where he's rushing, it will actually stun him and stop him in his tracks. So that is really good. They're very versatile. Plus, they're really good for taking out large packs of mobs as well, being able to one shot a lot of them. And they're just a super useful and super powerful weapon that I think majority of should be running. 
especially when you're in solo play having this option to take out a good amount of tankier enemies and being able to one shot the walkers you know uh three to four shot the tanks with them being able to stop chargers when they're rushing at you if you don't have a rock to get behind to actually make them stop it is just so many different versatile things you can use with these grenades so 100 advise you guys actually running these grenades and you should have seen improvement to how quick you can kill the walkers tanks chargers and so on while using this weapon now for our next tip we actually have the railgun now i know i've talked about this before but i feel like i have to say it again just because the railgun is so versatile and so useful on top of that the main thing i wanted to talk about with the railgun is just the fact that i feel like people are not turning it into unsafe mode now if you don't know what unsafe mode is having it in safe mode will only allow it to charge to 100 percent meaning that you can't overcharge the weapon now this is fine if you're just trying to take your little enemies you know chargers and so on but when it comes to things like file titans you really want to have this in unsafe mode now the only learning curve you kind of have with unsafe mode is if you overcharge it to a maximum which for this rate we're just going to say 150 percent so if you go above that 150 percent the gun will explode now the, the tip that i would have for this is just simply go in first person mode when you're actually uh, using the railgun in unsafe mode from here you can actually see the charge run on the left and right of the weapon and you can actually go ahead and see when it gets too full i usually wait till it gets in that you know red orangey glow and then from there i let it go now doing so in unsafe mode will actually increase the damage allowing us you know two to three shot battle titans allowing us to one to two shot the chargers leg armor off get that weak point opened up we could finish it off with a shotgun or any of your primaries allowing you to get that crit point and that extra damage allowing you to destroy some of the weaker armored enemies and really it just allows the weapon to have so much more damage that i think a lot of people should be taken advantage of because uh, i've seen a lot of people that i've been playing with actually did not even know that you could turn the weapon into unsafe mode i just wanted to reiterate that here in this video and share it with you guys as i think is a must know tip now speaking of actually using the rogue gun to kill the vile titan on unsafe mode our next tip here is how to easily kill the bio titan now the bio titan is going to be the strongest bug that you can actually encounter when you're playing in those harder difficulties like you know difficulty 8 difficulty 9 and so on and the easy way to kill this is actually to just shoot it in the face now there is some inconsistencies with doing it sometimes you'll one to two shot it sometimes it'll take four to five shots i really haven't pinpointed the cause i've seen some people saying it could be a thing with fps locking it to like 60 or 120 fps will give you more consistencies because it has something to do with the travel speed of the actual round and the fps has a play in that some other people just say you're simply not hitting in the face and so on but the thing that i found to get the most consistent with it is just wait for it to open its mouth and then shoot it it'll either one shot it when it opens its mouth or it'll stop it from actually breathing at you which will give you a follow-up shot the majority of the time you can two to three tap it if you don't one tap it on the first time now once you guys know actually how to kill the bio titans pretty easily running solo in the harder difficulties like difficulty eight and nine it's going to be kind of easy to go ahead and plan what you're going to be doing especially because like i said that's going to be the hardest enemy you can actually face when you're doing the bug side so knowing how to easily deal with the bio titan is going to come really handy completing those missions especially in group play and in solo play and this is a versatile tip that you can pretty much apply to whatever type of content you're doing now for tip six is don't fight everything you see like i said at the start of the video in tip one where i said about using style to let patrols pass really applies to tip six you don't get any bonuses for killing x amount of titans or chargers or slaying x amount of bugs on a mission so there really is no point to kill everything you see but you do get a bonus to actually having a remaining time on the mission when you extract so completing missions in a timely fashion is 100 more important than killing every bug on your screen or killing x amount of bio titans chargers and so on now for tip seven i'm just going to talk about the super samples really quick i did a video on this a few days ago but i kind of want to throw it in here because solo playing the super samples are going to be really important to get your final upgrades and your more powerful upgrades for your orbitals you know your eagle strikes your weapons and so on so it is a must thing to get especially in solo play you need to get those upgrades to make your missions go quicker to make him you know be able to kill enemies more easily and so on so the tip that i'm talking about is you can actually see them on the mini map now it is going to be a little bit hard to see them you're going to look for a like silver blob silver rock type icon and you're actually going to notice on the map when you see that that 90 percent of the time that's where the rock is going to be now there's a fake rock on the map that is sometimes not going to have the actual samples on it and so on so be aware of that if you do find that just look for the other icon like i said i just wanted to say that because it is really important to get those upgrades to really complete the missions quicker and to really efficiently kill the bio titans and the chargers the tanks and so on because you're going to need those upgrades to kill them a lot faster now for the last tip we have here is to build around the mission you're going into if you're doing a blitz mission where you got to destroy eggs or you're doing a defense mission 
build around those mission types for a defense mission you want to bring more sentries you want to bring you know stuff like that to where you can lock an area down throw them up and shoot and allow them to passively kill enemies as they come in if you're doing a blitz mission obviously you don't want to run sentries because you're going to try to go through the mission as fast as possible so you're going to want to bring in stuff like you know orbital rail cannons the orbital laser you know the eagle strikes and stuff like that to really help you progress throw them down destroy a nest move on to the next and so on so really see what missions you're going into. If it's a boss mission, you want to bring more armored type of stratagems, rail guns, the orbital rail gun, and stuff like that to really go ahead and hammer on those harder, tankier, more armored enemies. So really look what your mission you're doing, build around it. So this way you can take it more efficiently where you actually have stratagems you can use rather than ones you're going to waste. But that's all I have for you guys for this video. And like I said, you can use these tips to apply whether you're playing with your squad, whether you're alone, whether you're going to be doing defense missions. These tips are universal, especially in solo play. These are very useful. And even in, like I said, squad play, they are really, really useful as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found some of the information useful or maybe something you didn't know throughout it. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night, depending on when you're watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.